on the entire spine. So it's not just about the head, it's that we are now pulling the spinal column up, lengthening and making more space for the nerves to flow out to the body. So we're allowing ourselves to be um, really well in a state of coherence when we create this vertical spine, we create that space, and then we relax everything that we can relax in terms of shoulder tension, chest tension, back and midsection, uh, gripping through the, the legs. So that when we stand up and do our Tai Chi where we're shifting and making these circles and spirals and whatnot, we're still attending to this central axis uh, that we keep. Um, and yeah, so find that central axis. Relax unnecessary tension. And then let's come to the breathing. So eyes softly close and just be interested in inhale, exhale for a little bit. Just watching that those two phases of breath occur by themselves. You can go in the nose, out the mouth, or in and out through the nose. You can breathe in through the mouth as needed, but over time, shift it to nasal breathing. So now that we've got our outer structural setup, then when we start breathing, notice that there are quite a few muscles involved in a breath. Take a nice inhale, feel what happens to the structure of the body. Let that breath out, feel what happens to the structure of the body. This expand and softly compress in movement is vital for the health of our organs, for our lymph system to keep it pumping. Uh, but we can be quote unquote alive and have our breath be very minute, very minimal, or it can have this robust sort of a range of motion that occurs with our breath. So <clears throat> now start to, with a little bit of effort, tell your inhale to go more full than it normally does and hold it there for just a bit. And then softly exhale and even with a little effort, tell your breath to empty a little bit more. Feel those muscles that tone in. Hold it empty for a little bit. Then open the valve and let the breath in. And then with effort, pull the breath in. Get a little more full. And then soften and let the breath out. And then with a little effort, squeeze the breath out just a touch. And let's just do this another 10 cycles. So this is like weightlifting. This is like any other exercise. Breathing is something we can train and become incredibly good at. And there's implications, beneficial or negative implications to the state of our breathing. It's a very powerful aspect of brain health, uh, chemical sort of neurotransmitters in the blood, uh, the state of the nervous system, the structural uh, suppleness in the body. So take it serious that breath is powerful. Even if all you could do on a given day for your practice was sit and breathe, focused breathing, you would do wonders for your health, mental, emotional, physical, chemical, fluids, just from being present and doing this breathing with an earnest focus. Now, what we add to that is structural movements a little more overt. So first movement here, sliding hands past the kneecaps just a bit, drop the head and round your back, sort of like you're slouching purposefully. Then slide the hands back, lifting the chest, pull elbows back, shoulder blades back, lift the chin, look up and arch the back. Then slide your hands forward, bowing the head forward, 
and then slide your hands back, pulling elbows back, lifting. Two more. Adding with the breath, exhale as you round. Inhale as you arch. Exhale as you round. Inhale as you arch. And settle to the middle. Gentle twists. We take left hand to right knee, right hand to right buttock, turn shoulders and head. As if just looking behind you. And then let's come back to middle and turn. With the breath, inhale to center. Exhale as you turn. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn. One more each. Inhale back to middle. Exhaling, let your arms dangle alongside you. Now, softly lean to the right. Right arm should be going a little lower, closer to the ground. Let your left elbow just float up a little bit. And then relax that left elbow. Just lean yourself back to the middle. And then let's go to the left here. Softly lean, right elbow lifts. So we're getting lateral bending of the spine here. Soft. Back to the middle. We can take that one step further. Lean. Elbow can rise. And then if there's space, if your shoulder's okay with it, reach. And this is where we get to open up the side body. So we're lengthening open one side of the spinal column and all of its tissue. Let's go back to middle and then lean. So the spinal column has the three main movements that we just explored. This is called lateral flexion and extension. One more each. Where we just softly lean. And again, if we don't make the movements our body is uh, built to do or to, to explore, we don't go into those directions. And what happens is there's a sort of rust, a sort of plaque buildup. Uh, on a tissue level and deeper. All right, we're back to the middle here. Now, shoulder blades, which are these pizza pie shaped, uh, like a little slice of pizza almost, like a little triangle kind of idea on our back, slide it up, it's called elevation, shrugging one shoulder blade up, the right shoulder blade, and then melt that shoulder blade down. Left shoulder blade shrugs up, and back down. Let's do that again. Right shoulder blade. So the arm goes along for the ride. So the arm lifts, but I'm not doing any lifting of the arm. I'm just moving my shoulder blade. And that's very important because many people think where their arm begins here, where the socket and arm meet, but in fact, it's in your back where the shoulder blade is floating around on your back. Now, both shoulder blades rise and both shoulder blades melt, rise, and melt. One more. And melt. All right, bring your legs close together. Right shoulder blade, notice that it can go up and down. Now what we do is take it forward. That's called protraction. Then lift it from there and roll it back. That's called retraction. And then we melt that shoulder blade back to neutral where it's just hanging. Forward, up, back, down. So it goes on a little journey and returns to nothing. Forward and up, back and down. Forward and up, back and down. One more. 
All right, and then we've got going the other way. Go back and up, forward and down. Now again, you'll see the arm moving, but it's only moving because I'm moving the root of the arm. The actual sort of place where the arm movement begins is in the shoulder blade. So we're just rolling it and switching arms. Forward and up, back and down. Forward and up, back and down. And we switch directions, back and up, forward and down. One more. All right, and then we double that up. Legs are uh, planted, feet planted in the ground. Now, lean a little bit forward, shoulder blades forward. Now, shoulder blades and elbows come up, shoulder blades back, elbows back, the arms drape down alongside you and we're back to neutral. Forward, up and back and then down. Feel that circular quality of how these joints relate to each other. That's what you find as you study more and more of this Tai Chi and Qigong is that everything in the body is circles and spirals. Let's go the other way. Back and up, forward and down. Back and up, forward and down. So the body's full of all these wheels. And we want to be using the body like we're using wheels rather than tension and hinges. We want to be sliding and circling and spiraling as we move back to neutral. Step your feet wider apart, a little wider than hips. You have a nice wide base. Take your left hand softly onto your uh, right knee. So that's for stability. And then lean over like we did earlier, a little side lean hang that right arm and now we circle from the shoulder socket so feel this movement right up here where the arm bone meets the socket circle getting slightly larger larger still larger find your range that feels good and then let it come to stillness and we go the other way circling circling a little larger a little larger still larger still, just feeling how you can execute movement without tension. It's what they call the hydraulic body uh, in how we should look at our body in, in terms of the uh, Taoist view of how to move. Circles, spirals, liquid, and relax. Let's switch sides. Lean over, small to large spirals, but can, can you execute it with nothing extra, just soft, hanging, and then just move it with this liquid body, right? Our body is basically one big liquid hole that we can use like a hydraulic power system. Go ahead and come back to neutral and then circle it in the other direction, whatever that is for you. Don't be forceful. Don't worry about how big your movement is. Instead, think qualitatively soft, easy, Relax and back to neutral, sitting up. Now with as much ease as possible, just bend the right elbow, touch the right shoulder and release back down, other side. Down. And again, what you're practicing is, are you doing anything unnecessary to bring this hand up and touch the shoulder or can you just with nothing but just the mind saying, hey, hand, come up, do that, right? And that's what we learn more and more with Tai Chi is how to move using the E or the mind to mobilize the Chi, which mobilizes the body. That's the narrative or the story. Now, both. It's nice and easy. On this next one, keep both hands up. 
Now we do this soft little chicken wing. Wings out, down to neutral. Across towards each other, squeeze. Elbows together, touch those elbows together, squeeze them. Relax, come back to neutral. Chicken wing, and relax. Towards each other, squeeze. Touching elbows together, and relax. Wing, together, one more. And just feel how everything just moves in a circular relationship. We want these circles to be executed with nothing but ease and softness, what they call sung in, in Chinese medicine and Taoist uh, thought. Now, pull the elbows behind you, and then relax the elbows down. Then move the elbows in front and up. And some of you might be able to get to where your elbows point up and your hands are on your back there. But don't force it. If that bothers you, don't force it. Come forward, down, back, down, forward. Again, you could stop here, 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 here. But just know that it might be possible to come up that high. And then down, two more, back, and forward, and back, <clears throat> and forward, and up. And then we come back to neutral, relax. Bend the elbows, bring the hands up just at uh, shoulder height, and just remember this movement here, pronation, supination, which is just the forearm bones sort of gently rolling over each other. This is a joint that we often forget we have, pronate and supinate. Now, palms stay facing up, bring fingers closer to each other, and then back to neutral, and then away from each other. Do that a couple of times and just be curious as to how are you doing this. Well, you're doing it from this shoulder joint, doing internal rotation, neutral, external rotation, right? Now let's put all that together. Keep your hands out wide to the side. Bend the elbows, they come up a little bit. Turn the palms over and internally rotate arms that bit so the fingers are softly touching and then go all the way down to almost straight. Then come up and now all together we roll open and settle down back to there. So we're putting all those movements together and making them graceful, symmetrical, and a more complicated Tai Chi or Qigong form or practice is taking these parts and putting them together in different sort of ways, like different recipes, different movements, these various ingredients come together and add complexity and add benefit. Last one here. Now we take that practice one step further, left hand only, up, over, all the way across, and then bring it right down, hovering just above the left palm, then reverse that all the way back. Right hand up, over the rainbow, all the way just above the palm, and then back. So this takes what we were just doing, steps it up a notch. Pretty strong demand for the shoulder, the chest, the arm. Reaching across, coming back. We're reaching across the body. Coming back, one more of each. Bring them over the top, settle down, rest shoulders, rest uh, elbows, everything nice and at ease. Couple of breaths here. Now the wrists and hands and fingers. Float your hands up 
off your legs, turn your palms up, fold at the wrist, drop the hands through, and then point them forward again. Spin so the palms face up. Fold, circle through, and point. Uh, spin. Fold, circle through, point, spin. Now, can you take all that and smooth it out so it's just a easy circle? Notice how your hand bones and fingers are getting a sort of an interesting experience with each other as well. The softer you are, the more you just flow through the movement and pause. Then turn your palms facing out, drop the fingers, point them towards your chest, and then roll them out like an offering. Spin so your palms face out, through, and out. Spin. turn so that the palms face out and then roll them through and then eventually you try and spin while you're coming under spin as you're coming under so now you're just getting out of the way then it's just ah ride the wheel you know so first we got to sort of get command again of the body and then we can just get out of the way and let it circle and done let the hands come down now we do a movement called sink chi to the belly as a closing. The hands come up and over, settle, 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 settle. The hands right in front of the belly area in a sort of bring attention to the navel and deep to the navel, which according to Qigong down here is our most important reservoir where our life force is generated and where it stores and comes out, right? So this little moment here and rest your hands on your legs. Now, head and neck, chin down, chin level, up, level, down, level, up, level, continue. Then take the pauses out for the last two and just see if you can make it one liquid movement. And back to neutral with your little floating bottle head. Now turn to look to the right, back to center, left, Center, continue. And then can you make it one liquid movement where it's from left to right? Boom, two more. Like you're just scanning the room. One more, scan the space, scan the space. And we come back to the middle. This movement's always a little weird for people, the puppy dog movement there. Ear softly come into the shoulder by relaxing open this uh, left side of the neck and then come back to middle. Drop that left ear towards shoulder by opening and releasing the right side of the neck. And then we bring the middle softly to the left. So you notice if you watch me, my chin does not come off my center line. My nose doesn't come off my center line. So don't turn the head as people tend to do. It's purely a lateral movement. So like Tony, notice that you're, you're actually turning your chin to, sort of like this, as opposed to truly just drop the head that way. And then back to center. Two more of each. Maybe make it a little more liquid. And then back to center. So those are our cardinal direction movements of the head and neck. That's all we're going to do today. But there are uh, about three other practices that take it into the circular. That's what we build towards. But first you have to have those very clean and clear for your brain, for your neck. So 
find time to practice these on your own chin down chin up looking left and right and then also this little sort of odd movement of the head and neck this little weird sort of bobbly movement of the head and neck okay scoot to the back of your chair all the way back so that you're sort of able to rest against the back of the chair now chamber bring the right knee up the heel close to the buttock and then set that down your weight shifts over to that hip and you pull the other one up now what's key to know about the chamber is it's more than just lifting my thigh it's also pulling the heel in towards the buttock so it's like a spring loading and then you set that foot down load the other leg chamber and down chamber down chamber down now chamber push re-chamber down chamber push notice that i'm pushing at a downward angle you could push at a more straightforward angle but sometimes that strains people's back so push at whatever angle feels right but get this feeling of load the spring unload the spring load the spring set it down chamber push chamber down chamber push now push and hold point flex point flex foot and ankle movements point and flex and then evert invert a little in out now circles in point around and back to flex continue that circle 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 in the other direction out out and down other side chamber push hold point flex Evert, invert. Just a little movement here. Circles inward. Outward. And neutral. Scoot back to the edge of your chair all the way forward so most of your leg is over the ground. <clears throat> swivel steps. Lift the left ball of foot, swivel on the heel, and just do that a couple of times. Notice this is like a hinge, like a gate that you can external, internal, external, internal. Let's do that on the other leg. Lift the ball of the foot, external, internal. Feel that command from your brain, which is different than chambering the leg, right? It's a different command. Okay, now back to your first leg, lift the ball of foot, external rotation, put the ball of foot down, lift your heel, swivel it internal, and now the heel should be stepped out and the leg is in this funky position. Lift the ball of foot again and externally rotate. Now you're even more open angle-wise. Put the ball of foot down, lift the heel, swivel. And then last one, roll it open. Now you're at your maximum. And then let's walk it in. Internal, lift the heel, external. Lift the toe, internal, lift the heel, external, and neutral. Walk it out again, this time with a little more flow. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five. And then let's walk it in. One, two three, four, neutral, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, neutral, other leg, lift ball of foot, external, lift the heel, internal, lift the toe, external, lift the heel, internal, last one, external, hold, walk it in, in, X, in, X, and neutral. Two more. A little more fluid. 
These are all movements that over time we can do while standing. They're a little more difficult because we have to uh, manage our body weight more than when we're sitting, but this is a way of uh, moving through space, heel toeing. All right, back to neutral, folding at the hips, hinge and rise, hinge and rise. Now take that one step further, lift chest and chin, hinge and slide the hands down round the back, let your head hang. Now when you come up, stay rounded. So your head is down the whole way up until you get to the top and then you lift chest, lift chin, arch, fold and bow and round. Now stay rounded as you come up and arch. One more, fold and round, rise up and Neutral, back to our neutral. Last couple things here on the chair. We step the feet wider apart, rest the hands sort of in this bulldog position. Fold, now with the legs out of the way, it allows you to get your hips and torso between your legs and arms a little deeper. So you can sort of create a little range there. And then let's come back up and lean back, back, back. Twice more, folding at the hips and then allowing for that rib cage to sort of sink and the head and neck to sort of round as if you're looking underneath your legs and then rising up and back. Last one, bowing. Now, keeping our legs wide, keeping our hands on the knees, we lean back. Now the dragon stirs the seat. Tip slightly to the right, lean your chest towards the right knee, and then sweep it through. And we come up around the other side of that circle and fold. So the dragon stirs the seat. This gives, again, our pelvis an experience of the circles, the ball and sockets, but it also, if we do it in a relaxed manner, allows each of the vertebrae to gently roll. Let's go the other way. So we want to move from the root, which is the hips, but we also don't want to be grabbing a hold too firmly on the rest of the body. So we want to just be sort of melting our way through the range. Last one. And we're back to middle legs come close to each other. And our last one before we stand up, arms out, palms turn to face up, reach. So this may not be working for some of you. Feel free to not do it, right? But if you can get to here, then the next challenge is can you reach the right hand a little higher than left? And then relax back to that neutral. Then left arm a little higher than the right. And then back to neutral. One more of each. Right arm. Left arm. Now both arms equally reaching, reaching, reaching. And sweep. Out, down, and alongside. And then the last one with the arms come forward, palms facing each other, then go forward and up, and this lends itself nicely to a bit of a back bend. Lift the chest, arch the back, leaning slightly back as much as feels useful and good to you. And then relax the effort, the arms come forward, all the way back down, let's sink the cheek to the belly, just as another one of those Moments of pause. Hands just hovering in front of the belly. This is called middle embrace. Mind settling, chi settling back to the belly. 
and then release your arms down alongside you. Now, to stand up, slide the feet back a little bit extra so that the knees are a little beyond the ankles. We fold at the crease of the hips, the head starts to go beyond the toes, and then a little bit of effort just to get the weight out of the tush, and then it's push through the earth and let that send us vertical. Arrive at standing position with nothing extra, just relax and at ease. Now time to sit down, we stick the butt back first. So we create this little change in relationship, then we sink, then we sit back and find that vertical again. Folding. So we have this moment of crouch and then we push through the earth to rise. So let's do that a few more times. The more liquid you can be, the better. Easy. Nothing's too forceful, nothing too forceful. One more. And now we are standing. So I'm just gonna move my chair, you keep your chair where it is. The next skill we learn from standing up and sitting down is what it means to have your Tai Chi legs set up. So to do it wrong first, straighten your knees so much that you even feel them go into a locked knee position. You may notice that either you or someone you know stands like this. If you look uh, next time you're out and about or with, with someone else, just notice how do they stand? Are their knees locked? Now, just softly unlock your knees and notice that that changes how your body can feel connected to the earth. Do it again. Lock your knees. Notice how it kind of feels stable, but it's more like you're on stilts. And then you soften those knees and allow them to bend in this sort of open way. And now you have a springiness, uh, an open quality all the way through to the earth. Now stay in that open quality. And let's do our Tai Chi basics in the arms and hands. So I'll turn sideways like this so you can see the angles. The hands, as if you're painting with the back of the hands, rise up to about shoulder height. And then you sink elbows as if you're now painting with your fingertips coming down. Hands come a little behind you. Forward and up. Down. Working on symmetry working on ease, working on not utilizing anything extra in terms of tension and work to just execute that movement. One more. These are basically the ABCs of Tai Chi, right? Simple, basic movements that we practice. Now, low cradle. See this circle quality here. Hands float out to the sides and up. This is the crane flapping its wings, down, softly scooped in, out, softly in, rising, sinking, one more. Now, the roll and fold. So we float up to the wings. Roll. Turn your arms to your palms face up. Fold at just the elbow joint so the hands fall in towards the middle and the fingers point towards each other. And then just let them settle all the way down to relaxed. Do that again. Float. Roll. Fold. So there we're doing this roll and fold as two separate movements. Over time, we want it to essentially be one movement. So it's float, roll, fold. And notice how with this, my arms are not going up beyond my shoulders. Uh, there's a particular just right around here, just, just at shoulder height. And final important thing here is the roundness of the body. When my arms go up, notice my hands are in front of my torso as opposed to 
pulled back alongside it. And that allows for this pathway that the hands just take. Good. And down. Now let's add a bit of complexity. Wings. Right hand roll fold. Left hand returns as if it's the crane wing. Embrace the moon. Right hand goes up and out back to a wing position. Left hand floats up like a wing. We're back to equal wings. Now left hand roll fold. Right hand sweeps under. Embrace the moon. Reverse. Left hand up and out. Right arm out. Wing. Left hand sweep under. Right hand over. So just notice how this feels to your brain that's different than when we were doing the symmetrical movements. They're easier, not entirely easy, but they're easier than now doing, having to track what one hand is doing and the other is doing and they're opposite to each other. But yet, as you practice more and more, you realize the state of, this, of our brain can be where we fully can track all of that and it feels easier and easier and easier. And that's when you can feel like you're advancing in your Tai Chi. So if it feels a little weird, a little difficult, good. Practice it and it gets easier and then your brain just is able to manage the body better. Finally, out to the wings. Wings come down. All right, now bend right elbow. The hand comes up just in front of the chest. Turn the palm forward-ish. Meaning, notice how my palm, I'm not flattening it in a flat plane. It's still got this soft roundness, right? So it's like there's a little ball in there. So now push forward, turn that hand around, draw back. Turn the hand, push. So again, these are all the ABCs of Tai Chi. Draw back. Soften anything extra. Soft fingertips, soft palm. The body can work really well when we are relaxed and at ease and aligned. As you finish this next one, let this hand just fall, the other hand rise, turn it forward-ish and push. Turn it around, draw, push, and draw. Now pay attention to slow, control. Draw. There's a term they use in Qigong a lot, silk reeling. Silk reeling. That we are moving as if reeling silk. Which means we have to move in a constant but gentle, steady way. Now release that arm down. Let's bring them both up. Both forward-ish. Push. Draw. Push, draw, relax anything extra in your hands. Notice if your hands are sort of like spreading like crazy, try to soften them a little bit so that it's more just like a fingertip push and draw. So there's not a whole bunch extra going on. Now, the next time you have your hands close to your chest, keep your right hand close, push the left hand only. Then switch both palm positions. One turns to face back, the other turns to face forward, and then draw the left hand back as you push the right. Switch. So this one is called Repulse Monkey. You can imagine we would be doing a movement like this while doing a backwards walk, right? While shifting the body weight, while rotating from our hips and waist. So right now we're learning the basic movements, coordinating the brain and body, and then you add on and add on as you get more proficient. Last one here. Keep your left hand close to your body. Bring your right hand back, both hands down. That's enough with our arms. Now the Tai Chi leg work. From here, notice right here you are double weighted. You're using both legs. Let your body weight arrange more over your right leg and feel that your left leg is getting a little vacation. Then come back to middle, they're both working equally. And then go over to the left, let the right leg get a little vacation. And then shift. And let the left leg get a vacation. This is what's called separate yin and yang. 
by truly being over in one leg and then changing and being over in the other leg. Let's keep doing that a little bit longer. Notice when you do that, do you do one of two mistakes? As you go to your right leg, do you lock the knee back? Can you keep it soft? And also when you go to one leg, do you do this, right? This is what a lot of people do. I'm exaggerating it, but a lot of times we jam into the hip and then we jam into the hip versus never jam into the hip. Just arrange yourself, get all the way through to the ball of each foot and then the ball of each foot. Now we add, as you shift to that left leg, let's all be there. Let's take our hands and stack them on the belly. Turn the belly button to point more to the left corner, not to the left wall, but to the corner. Now keep it pointing at that corner as you shift to the right leg. Then turn so you point to the right corner. Then Stay pointed to the right corner as you shift to the left leg and then turn. Shift to the right leg and then turn to the right. Shift to the left leg, turn to the left. How much control do you have over that time that it's taking you to shift? Are you falling over there or are you slowly spilling? gaining mastery over the interchange between what leg are you using? This is very important for balance long-term. Now, take left hand behind your back, right hand, your bare paw, dip it into the water. That's just hanging down by your side. You're basically in waist deep, uh, hip deep water. Shift to the left leg, turn the belly button to the left and sweep that right hand through the water. Turn the hand around so the palm faces back to the right. Shift right, turn right. That's called brush knee. Turn the hand. Shift, turn, sweep. Turn the hand. Shift, turn, brush the knee. Again, Tai Chi ABCs right now. Shift, turn, sweep. Shift, turn, brush. One more. Shift, turn, sweep. Shift, turn, brush. Take right hand behind your back, bring the left hand out, sweep it across. Turn the hand around. Now we're ready for brush knee, sweep the leg. Brush the knee, sweep the leg. There's a shift, there's a turn, there's a release of the hand. A shift, a turn, a release of the hand and arm. Shift, turn, sweep. Shift, turn, brush. One more. Place the left hand behind your back. Bring that right hand out again. Sweep. Now this is called uh, hand plays with clouds. So let's brush the knee. And then let's sweep the leg. Now what happens to water after it turns to gas? It vaporizes up and then it becomes a cloud in the sky. Shift to the right, turn to the right. The cloud comes across the sky. Clouds naturally rain back into the lake. Shift, turn, sweep the lake. Raise, shift, turn, cloud rain. So you can get that to flow a little bit. So remember it's lake. It vapors up and becomes a cloud. Clouds stay in the sky. As you shift and turn, the cloud comes across the sky. Very good. And then it rains down and now it's in the lake again. And then we shift and turn and sweep the lake becomes a cloud, vapors up, and then we're going cloud and rain. Now put that hand behind your back, bring that other hand out, sweep the leg, vapor. Shift and turn cloud, rain. Shift and turn lake, vapor. Cloud across the sky, rain. 
lake, vapor, cloud, across the sky, rain, lake, vapor, cloud, rain. Now, both hands out, wash your paws. So this is made up of one hand doing brush knee, the other hand sweeping the lake, and then they change jobs. Brush knee, sweep lake. Brush knee, sweep lake. All the while we're finding our middle. We're learning how to change weight from one to the other. We're turning, we're rotating. We're allowing the movement of the shoulders and arm bones and forearms and wrists and hands and fingers to be natural, easy, nothing extra. Now, the next time you're coming to your right, let the left hand sweep the leg and rise up and be a cloud. So now we come back and across. It's cloud and lake and then vapor and rain. Then we shift and turn cloud lake while we stay to the right, we vapor and rain. Shift and turn cloud and lake. Vapor and rain. Shift and turn cloud lake. Vapor rain. Let's do a few more. Can you keep your brain connected to the tips of the fingers of both hands the whole time? So it's not my awareness is in my upper arm, but this arm down here, I've totally forgotten about. Can you be attentive to both? Attentive to both the whole time. And that's what Tai Chi demands of us. And then we add stepping and other additional challenges. But we got to start getting comfortable here. All righty, last one. Now we close this by doing this little crisscrossed arm. Shift to the middle, bring the bottom hand up, cross, turn both palms down, and settle. And then our last thing we'll do is this basic uh, Tai Chi stance work here. So shift your weight to your uh, left leg, swiveling on the heel of your right foot. Just turn that foot out 5, 10, 15 degrees. Shift over into that right leg, empty the left foot and just take a small step forward. Now what you'll notice if you look at my body, what I didn't do was let this leg come over here. So try to keep that foot out so there's a bit of width in between here. Once you've got that stance, then uh, place your hand on your navel. Shift 70% into your front leg, and that means you're not going so far that you're jamming your knee. You're just going a little bit more into the front leg, and turn your belly button to face the front of uh, the camera there. Then sit back and arrange yourself in your back leg. And then 70 into the front leg. Shift back, 100. Shift forward, 70. Keep this teacup on the crown of your head balanced. Now, the next time you shift back, bring your hands up as if drawing something towards you, then turn your palms to face forward-ish, shift 70% forward and push the hands out beyond, right? Turn the palms around, shift back, hands receive in. Turn the palms to face forward, it's shift and push. Turn the hands around. Shift back and receive. Shift forward and push. Shift back, receive. Two more. Shift and push. Shift back, receive. Shift and push. Shift back, receive. Bring your hands back to your belly. Step your left foot back. Parallel your feet, and then let's turn this left leg out. Shift into the right leg, turn the left foot out. Shift over there, take that little Tai Chi step, a little small step forward, keeping width. Don't let the foot migrate here, keep it out there. Shift forward, turn the belly button to face forward. 
Shift back and forth a couple of times. Teacup balanced on the top of your head. That means you're not leaning forward and leaning back, but just staying that nice vertical line from one leg to the other. Now, as you shift back, bring the hands up. Now it's shift forward, Tai Chi push. Shift back, Tai Chi receive. Push. One of the main things you're working on in this push is that the power, if you were to, let's say, push a door open, I think it's a great example, one of those doors with the bar that you have to sort of push in order to unlock it to get it to go through, you can either tense up your entire body and all these muscles and try to go like, all right, here we go, and push, or you can have this liquid body and you can, like a wave, push, the, push through. So it's like using the power of a wave from the ocean to exact some force. But the key to that working is that you aren't tense and compartmentalized in your body. So this Tai Chi practice of shift and come back is trying to get the movement to feel like an octopus, linked, fluid, right? The movement of the legs is translating out to the palms, to the fingertips. The power really is coming from the earth, right? Our connection to the ground and we're and back. Last one. Push and receive. So now you've received back. Step that front foot back. Let the hands come down by your side. And our finishing movement, watch me do it first. Hands float up, around, and out. Then we bring the hands into the mouth, down to the belly, and then this is a little tricky bit. The tail sneaks out the back a little, and we just do a soft little crouch, a little Tai Chi crouch. So this is called Sink Chi Wash the Organs. So let's do it together. From standing, crane wing, turn your palms forward, tip into your toes just a bit and do this gathering gesture up at, a, at the height of your mouth, then rock back as if to rock into your heels, bring into the mouth, down to the belly, and then dangle your fingertips, let the tail sneak out the back, and just Tai Chi crouch, and your arms hang. Let your arms hang, All right? So by the time you finish, you completely release. Then you rise, and you're back to standing, totally at ease. Wings, turn the palms forward-ish, Rock forward, this gathering gesture. Rock back, this drinking in and down to the belly gesture. And then through. Tai Chi crouch. One more. Wings. Rock forward, a round gather. Rock back, a drinking in, down and through. And we close with that final sink chi to the belly. Stack the hands over the navel. One, two, five breaths here. And then we do our finishing Taoist bow. Grab one thumb, fold the hand over. That makes this little yin yang symbol representing balance and finished. Have a seat in your chair. I you know uh, many of you have somewhere you need to be, so you're welcome to just wave and, and leave the meeting totally fine. I also am happy to sit around uh, for a bit and chat. So. Feel free to unmute, uh, ask any questions, um, share any insights. Hi, Phyllis. Bye, Phyllis. So to unmute, if you want to, it's that bottom left. You have to move your mouse to the bottom left of the screen and uh, go from there.